The whole thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay, this was the puzzle we mentioned last time, that this statement, the first part of it doesn't seem in any way to relate to the second. And I thought what we'd do today is perhaps uh, look at it in terms of the particularly interesting section and jump back and forth. Mm -hmm. So let's um, do it. Uh, now in this book, in this translation, is different from Thomas Taylor where you see he uses the word mind, right? It's understanding. Did you mention the stuff that we were starting? I didn't mention that. Okay, we're going to talk about this in terms of the, dy the dynamics, right, of the love relationship. And I'd like you to see if we can pick it up at 252C. Right. Picking up the followers of Zeus, do you have that? It's for it's two fifty two C. Okay. Four ninety one, which is between four ninety three, right? Good. Good. be taking more than we can do, you know, in the evening, but uh, I don't know that we'll be able to complete the section. I think it's important. Well, let's pick it up from here and push it. All right, it starts with Zeus. Do you have that? Everyone? Yeah. Got it, right? mm -hmm. What page is that? 491. 491 here, 252. Anyone have extra copies? You can pass it around to people who don't have one. I have an extra copy. Everyone got it? Okay. Um, Sean's running as well. It's a, it's a Thomas Taylor. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll use that. Two. Thanks. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, we need a, a, a slow reader. I'll read. Slow reader? Sure. Come on up. Come on up. Okay. No. <coughs> Daniel, you can just One right at the corner here so she can show me. That'd be great. Thanks, David. Thanks, Alfred. Now he who is a follower of Zeus, when seized by love, can bear a heavier burden of the winged god. But those who are servants of Ares 
and followed in his train, when they have been seized by love and think they have been wronged in any way by the beloved, become murderous and are ready to sacrifice themselves and the beloved. So it is with the follower of each of the other gods. He lives so far as he is able, honoring and imitating that god, so long as he is uncorrupted, and is living his first life on earth. And in that way he behaves and conducts himself toward his beloved and toward all others. Now each one holds it. Now each one chooses his love from the ranks of the beautiful according to his character, and he fashions him and adorns him like a statue, as though he were his god, to honor and worship him. The followers of Zeus desire that the soul of him whom they love be like Zeus. So they seek for one of philosophical and lordly nature, and when they find him and love him, they do all they can to give him such a character. If they have not previously had experience, they learn then from all who can teach them anything. They seek after information themselves, and when they search eagerly within themselves, to find the nature of their God, they are successful because they have been compelled to keep their eyes fixed upon the God. That's it. Okay. Wow. Okay. What would you say is going on? All right, let us say, see, there is a triadic relationship in love. Right. It compares whether it's Zeus or Ares. When he finds beauty in terms of, and especially the character of someone who is, let us assume we're now dealing with Zeus, then the lover is trying his best to bring that person closer to. And notice there's something curious that happens here. There's a benefit that's bestowed. What are they doing? They're honoring and imitating. And he behaves and conducts himself towards his beloved and towards all others. Now each one chooses his love from the ranks of the beautiful according to his character, and he fashions him and adorns him like a statue, as though he were a god, to honor and worship. <clears throat> Fathers of Zeus desire the soul of him who they love be like Zeus. Right? So, look here, you know, you can do, you can say that. Uh, to the degree that this is successful, right? This union, very close. It could start out as a distance, right? And you could talk about the progress in terms of as the base of the triangle and its sides, let us assume it's an equilateral triangle. As that diminishes, so they their union becomes nothing other than a kinship between the three of them under the aspect of Zeus. Right. 
Uh, but the part that's interesting is um, they learn from everyone who can teach them anything. They seek information themselves. They search eagerly within themselves to find the nature of their God. So they search within themselves to find the nature of that God. They're successful because they have been compelled to keep their eyes fixed upon the God. And as they reach and grasp him by memory, they're inspired and receive from him, right, coming back, they receive from him the habits. Right, curious, see? They receive from him the character and the habits of that God. Okay, now, see, most often uh, what happens is that <clears throat> in a love relationship, we uh, tend to to become attracted to those who we already know how to be affectionate towards now. because without a theology we use the model of our parents say that uh, un unbeknownst to many people, here's the father or the mother, right? and when someone sees someone who has the character and functions in a similar way to these pair, this person then does everything they can to try to make their beloved just like that model, because it's so much easy, it's easy to love someone who you already know how to love. Because you've learned how to love from these people, you find someone who is similar in character and functions in a similar way. You don't have to worry about it, so you act in a similar way. And that's called attraction and love. By the way, this person equally right, has their parents and is going to do the same thing to the other person, make them as much as possible <coughs> chaos. To the degree that there's a difference between their object of devotion. <laughs> it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Only here, what's the difference? He's saying, hey, you know what? <clears throat> there are uh, the 12 gods. Each has a character. If you study each of these characters, you you have been, according to this sketch, you have exhausted all the possible characters there are. They are distributed among mankind, and therefore you can then become a counselor based upon mythology, and you can make a buck. <laughs> yeah, that? in new age it would be. And very remember, ten percent comes home in order to keep up our beer fund. This is true. <laughs> Right, but this is what he's doing, isn't it? It's called Atma character. In the, right, right. In <clears throat> right. Beautiful. And therefore he's saying, by the way, uh, 
this he's calling reality. This is reality. This is the way. And therefore, when someone finds someone like this, like their, their characters, and they've been brought up or involved in something like this, crisis. Crisis between models. Now, look there, see. And as they reach and grasp him by memory, they're inspired and receive from him character and habits so far as it's possible for a man, right? Right. Because they're learning more and more about the deity, right? And they're building up, they're building up things, what do they bring in from previous experience, from those who teach them anything. They seek, in, they seek information for themselves. They search eagerly with themselves to find the nature of the God within themselves. All of that, all of that, is now in their memory. It's in their memory. And this, the, where he's going is, as that is purified, it finally matches the archetype. Now as they consider the beloved the cause of all this, so they love him more than before. And if they draw the waters of their inspiration from Zeus like the Bacchanites, they pour it out upon the beloved and make him so far as possible like their god. Ah, those who follow Hera seek a kingly nature, Apollo, or some of those, etc., etc. And they go out and seek for their beloved a youth whose nature accords with that of the god. And when they've gained his affection by imitating the god themselves and by persuasion and education, they lead the beloved to the, to the conduct and nature of the god. So far as, uh, uh, as far as each of them can do so. Thus the desire for true lovers and the, image, and the initiation into the mysteries of love which they teach, if they accomplish what they desire, ah, I'll describe in a, I'll, I'll describe in a short while. Is it, is it, is it, is it, right? Given this then, look here, then how do you, it follows if this is the case, then how do you capture someone who fits? How do you get them? What kind of trap do you have to make? Catch one of these people most akin to you, right? 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 <laughs> right? Got to be devious, right? We got to make a set of trap, right? Oh yeah. All set. We're gonna. What are we gonna find out? How to set this trap, right? And capture them. Agree? Good. And that's why we can go to two fifty-three. And I like the way he begins it. See. Thus, the desire of the true lovers and the initiation into the mysteries of love which they teach if they accomplish what they desire in the way I describe is beautiful and brings happiness from the inspired lover to the, to the loved one. If he be captured, and the fair one who is captured is caught in the following <laughs> manner. <laughs> right? What are we going to get now? The manner of the <laughs> instruction booklet. Instructions on how to set a trap. Right? A successful trap. Yes, 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 yes. We need to read. Yeah, thank you, sir. Want to read? No, no, no. Shall we leave I'll it to read? It. Regina asked before. I'll, I'll pass. Okay. Slow? Sure. Pick from there. Okay, in the beginning of this tale. In the beginning of this tale. I divided each soul into three parts, two of which had the form of horses, the third that of the chariot. Let us retain this division. Now of the horses we say one is good and the other bad, but we did not define what the goodness of the one and the badness of the other was. That we must do now. The horse that stands at the right hand is upright and has clean limbs. 
He carries his neck high, has an aquiline nose, is white in color, and has dark eyes. He is a friend of honor, joined with temperance and modesty, and a follower of true glory. He needs no whip, but is guided only by the word of command and by reason. The other, however, is crooked, heavy, ill put together. His neck is short and thick, his nose flat, his color dark, his eyes gray and bloodshot. He is the friend of insolence and pride, is shaggy, cared, uh, shaggy eared and deaf, hardly obedient to whip and spurs. Now when the chariot beholds the love-inspiring vision and his whole soul is worn by the sight and is full of the tickling and prickling of the yearning, the horse that is obedient to the chariot, constrained then as always by modesty, controls himself and does not leap upon the beloved. Ah, but the other no longer heeds the pricks or the whip of the chariot, but springs wildly forward, causing all possible trouble to his mate and to the chariot, tear, and forcing them to approach the beloved and propose the joys of love. Now and this, they, is, this is the state of mind of the beloved. Right. Right. It's the state of their soul. That's a beloved. Well, what do you think? Are they going to capture the lo the lover? The lover seeking. No. Okay. Okay. I think. What, what do you mean here when you say this is the state of mind of the beloved? Sure. I think what Gina was puzzled about is I thought what was being described myself was that this is the state of mind of the lover, rather than the beloved. Oh, how is he going to capture the beloved, uh, the, the lover? Hmm? How is he going to capture the lover? Who, uh, who's okay. he? Right. The charioteer, the lover. Look her. But we're going to try to capture something, aren't we? Right. We're going to capture the lover? No, no capture the beloved. Yeah, well. But the charioteer is... Is the charioteer. What's the charioteer? Well, the charioteer <coughs> is being led by two horses. That's or, true. I totally agree. Who is it? Is it the lover or the beloved? The, the charioteer, charioteer is the lover. Oh, okay. okay. One-third of the lover. Or, or a third of the lover, see, right? Look at, see. Or actually the, the, the fun, lover. The fun thing to do is... Um, Yeah, okay, that's good. Let's leave it. Okay. Right. Um, because uh, you, it could might, be either, you then. might say that if you want to take this to be the lover, then this is what the lover has to go through so that he can then capture the beloved. Right. Or you could say this is the beloved and this is what they have to do before they can have that union. And... Uh, hmm. It's, it's, shall we go? Okay. Okay. Um, and they at first, let's see. Uh, well, you read that whole paragraph, right, you guys? Yeah. And they at first pull back indignantly and will not be forced to do terrible and unlawful deeds. But finally, as the trouble has 
so in, uh, no, has no end, they go forward with him, yielding and agreeing to do his bidding. And they, be, and they come to the beloved and behold his radiant face. And as the charioteer looks upon him, his memory is borne back to the true nature of beauty, and he sees it standing with modesty upon a pedestal of chastity. And when he sees this, he is afraid and falls backward in reverence. And in falling, he is forced to pull the rein so violently backward as to bring both horses upon their haunches, the one quite willingly, since he does not oppose him, but the unruly beast very unwillingly. And as they go away, one horse in his shame and wonder wets all the soul with the sweat, but the other, as soon as he is recovered from the pain of the bit and the fall, before he has fairly taken breath, breaks forth into angry reproaches, bitterly revolving, reviling his mate and the charioteer for their cowardice and lack of manhood in deserting their post and breaking their agreement. And again, in spite of their unwillingness, he urges them forward and hardly yields to their prayer that he postpone the matter to another time. Then when the time comes, which they have agreed upon, they pretend that they have forgotten it. But he reminds them, struggling and neighing and pulling, he forces them again with the same purpose to approach the beloved one. And when they are near him, he lowers his head, raises his tail, takes the bit in his teeth, and pulls shamelessly. The effect upon the charioteer is the same as before, but more pronounced. He falls back like a racer from the starting rope, pulls the bit backward even more violently than before from the teeth of the unruly horse, covers his scurrilous tongue and jaws with blood, and forces his legs and haunches to the ground, causing him much pain. Now when the bad horse has gone through the same experience many times and has ceased from his unruliness, mm -hmm. he is humbled and follows henceforth the wisdom of the charioteer. And when he sees the beautiful one, he is overwhelmed with fear. And so from that time on, the soul of the lover follows the beloved in reverence and in awe. Go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now the beloved, since he receives all service from his lover, as if he were a god, and since the lover is not feigning, but is really in love, and since the beloved himself is by nature friendly to him who serves him, although he may at some earlier time have been prejudiced by his schoolfellows or others, who said that it was a disgrace to yield to a lover, and may for that reason have repulsed his lover. Yet, as time goes on, his youth and destiny cause him to admit him into a society. For it is the law of fate that evil can never be a friend to evil, and that good must always be friend to good. And when the lover is thus admitted, and the privilege of conversation and intimacy has been granted him, his goodwill, as it shows itself in close intimacy, astonishes the beloved, who discovers that the friendship of all his other friends and relatives is as nothing when compared with that of his inspired lover. And as this intimacy continues and the lover comes near and touches the beloved in the gymnasia and in their general intercourse, when the fountain of that stream, which Zeus, when he was in love with Ganymede, called desire, flows copiously upon the lover, and some of it flows into him, and some, when he is filled, overflows outside, and just as the wind or an echo rebounds from smooth, hard surfaces and returns 
whence it came, so the stream of beauty passes back into the beautiful one through the eyes, the natural inlet to the soul, where it reanimates the passages of the feathers, waters them, and makes the feathers begin to grow, filling the soul of the loved one with love. So he is in love, but he knows not what, knows not with whom. He does not understand his own condition and cannot explain it. Like one who has caught a disease of the eyes from another, he can give no reason for it. He sees himself in his lover as in a mirror, but is not conscious of the fact. And in the lover's presence, like him, he ceases from his pain. And in his absence, like him, he is filled with yearnings such as he inspires and loves him and love's image, requited love, dwells within him. But he calls it and believes it to be not love, but friendship. Like the lover, though, less strongly, he desires to see his friend, to touch him, kiss him, and lie down by him. And naturally, these things are soon brought about. Now as they lie together, the unruly horse of the lover has something to say to the charioteer and demands a little enjoyment in return for his many troubles. And the unruly horse of the beloved says nothing, but teeming with passion and confused emotions, he embraces and kisses his lover, caressing him as his best friend. And when they lie together, he would not refuse his lover any favor if he asked it. But the other horse and the charioteer oppose all this with modesty and reason. If now the better elements of the mind, which lead to a well-ordered life and to philosophy prevail, they live a life of happiness and harmony here on earth, self-controlled and orderly, holding in subjection that which causes evil in the soul and giving freedom to that which makes for virtue. And when this life is ended, they are light and winged, for they have conquered in one of the three, for they have conquered in one of the three of truly Olympian Olympic contests. Neither human wisdom nor divine inspiration can confer upon man any greater blessing than this. If, however, they live a life less noble and without philosophy, but yet ruled by the love of honor. Probably, when they have been drinking or in some other moment of carelessness, the two unruly horses taking the souls off their guard will bring them together and seize upon and accomplish that which is by the many accounted blissful. And when this has been done, and when this has once been done, they continue the practice, but infrequently, since what they are doing is not approved by the whole mind. So these two pass through life as friends, though not such friends as the others, both at the time of their love and afterwards, believing that they have exchanged the most binding pledges of love, and that they can never break them and fall into enmity. No, I, um, I'm having trouble with this section, maybe you can help me. Um, <laughs> As you're looking at this description, um, <clears throat> could you list all of the things the lover sees and the beloved sees and the lover? Um, could you line them up and kind of just quickly go over them? Oh, just maybe there's just one or two. <coughs> and, uh, Sees, matter of fact, use the word perception in the general sense, not just sight. All the ways in which the senses might be involved. Is, is there anything there? Well, quite a lot. I was looking at... What, what? I, well, there's quite, it seems like there's several, if not quite a few. <laughs> oh, let me change that. Oh. Because <laughs> I just, I, I, I saw you write that, I, I jumped ahead and saw like... As the charioteer looks upon him, his memory is born back to the true nature of beauty. There's one, right? As he looks upon him, even though that's the charioteer, it's still 
uh, one of the, it's a seeing function, right? Oh. And there's, um, a, there was another one that just, well, it says here, he does not understand his own condition and cannot explain it like one who has caught a disease of the eyes from another. He can see no reason for it. He sees himself in his lover as in a mirror, but is not conscious of the fact. So there's another scene, but there, and I think there are quite a few. So other people mm -hmm. can jump in. Mm -hmm. Oh, but did you say there's a, more than a few? Yeah. Oh. And then so the. Well, what would you say uh, is the role of <laughs> perception then in this description? Mm -hmm. I'd like to see more. Of it. Well, it's the natural inlet to the soul. Oh. To well, look here. Go over it again. Let me ask you again. <clears throat> um. <clears throat> and of course, we're assuming that you, our triad is still here, right? The God, in this relation. I'm trying to make them more like Zeus, like if that's Zeus or Ares, whatever it is. Um, what would you call what we're getting here? Um, Is, is he stressing understanding? 256b. If now the better elements of the understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, Thank you. Uh, is this uh, understanding based upon uh, Plato's view of <coughs> the Logos? Is this? what he's giving, what he perceives, not perceives, um, the vision of love that includes uh, the gods all the way to mortals, right, and, and the path leading all the way in the return to it, through physical love, starting with physical love, attraction. Huh. Huh. Um, Just wondering if you just put that in mind. Actually, don't, I don't see the role of understanding at 256. Pardon me? I just didn't see what we were referring to when we said the role of understanding, Tina. Oh, on... Oh, uh, I thought it was... Yeah. Uh, Translated as... 256B. See, he says B. That's why I'm puzzled. Mm -hmm. Right, and now if the better elements of the mind, that's understanding. Mm -hmm. Is Which leads to, sorry, my bad. Right. right before B. Mm -hmm. And, uh. Of the Dianoia, yeah. 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 Um. Well ordered is falling away to come. Well. Oh, sorry, harmony. And, um, is it, yeah, is he also developed, pardon me? Well, just the word that's translated for uh, harmony is homonoeticon. Like, uh, and, yeah, well, logistical, what do you call it? Uh, what do you want to, what word would you use? Um, singularity of noose, the mm. noose that's all one, it's difficult. Well, <clears throat> is this also uh, cultivating uh, not only a relationship being akin, each are trying to be, help the other become like the ideal which they both share? Yes. Uh, and this ideal becomes then an object of experience as much as it can? Yes. And then do they use that, the memory of that also in the relationship? Oh. oh. Say, can we go back to this uh, puzzle for a moment uh, and take a look at it? Let's take a look at it. We need someone to read it, don't we? Yep. Ah, go ahead. Where are we at? The puzzle. Your, your hand was up, was it not? Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. <laughs> For a human being? Uh, 
Uh, for a human being must understand... That's enough. <coughs> Is that playing a role in this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I must understand. Go ahead. I must understand a general conception... A general conception, a general idea... Formed by collecting into a unity... Hey, what do you got to do? You got to collect into a unity. You have to pull all this into a unity. Oh, that's curious. The many perceptions of the senses, and this is okay. Just that much. Mm -hmm. By means of reason, right? Is this all reasoning? Yeah. Is that what he's doing? Should be. Oh. Hopefully. It, is, <laughs> I mean, he's telegraphing ahead what he's going to be doing. You say, I'll tell you what a human being is. It's someone who can, who's into this universe. Is that right? Oh, well, then we'll go for the next part. And this is a recollection of those things which our soul once beheld when it journeyed with God. And lifting its vision above the things which we now say exist rose up into real being. Because the goal of the Zeus followers then, this then is the goal of real being. Only, uh, that's a curious kind of stuff. Hmm. God journey. And therefore it is just that the understanding of the philosopher only has wings. Right? Back to understanding, are we not? Right? That's the subject of this curious statement. Huh. So, uh, <coughs> let's land in a <coughs> in a good one. <coughs> what would you say, therefore, now? See if we can go back into Zeus and Aries. Uh, what's the difference between those two loves? How far does it go? Is there another class, therefore, from Zeus that picks up at page uh, 503, which is 256B5, 256B5? Right, going back. If how right right right. If, however, they live a life less noble and without philosophy, right? We have a new class, do we not? At that point, mm -hmm. the lower class. right? Because this first group was those inspired by Zeus and philosophers. Agree. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we like to take a look at this and compare the two. Um. Well, this then brings in what you brought up last week, the temperance, knowledge, temperance, and justice. Ah, this because this looks Zeus, like what? what Zeus would be doing. This, this is a study of temperance. Exactly. Ah! Mm -hmm. Ah! Ah! Yeah. Ride the white horse. This is a dynamic view of the whole God, idea of temperance, isn't mm -hmm. it? Right, right. Which the Republic is called the Concord. Mm -hmm. Concord and Harmony. Oh. Uh, of the two forces, two horses, same thing. Yeah. 
Only Republic only gives one page to the page and a half to Temperance. Very sketchy. Uh, can you find uh, Justice as well? And uh, yeah, you got it. Well, I, I was just thinking that that's how he describes Justice would be a good. Uh, right. I, I, I talked about the word homonoeticon earlier, and how he describes. Are you going to infer it? <laughs> well, I don't know. Oh God. No, I'm not. Look, let no, finish. Kick him. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Get a good quote and impress us with a good quote. Uh, you don't want to infer it. Well, right? Let me talk for a second. Yeah, okay. Back in it. Never mind. <laughs> okay, let's pick it up from there. If, however, they live a life less noble and without philosophy, but yet ruled by the love of honor, following Aries. Probably when they have been drinking or in some other moment of carelessness, the two unruly horses, taking the souls off their guard, will bring them together and seize upon and accomplish that which is by many accounted blissful. And when this has once been done, they continue the practice, but infrequently, since what they're doing is not approved by understanding. It's all about understanding. So these two pass through life as friends, though not such friends as the others, both at the time of their love and afterwards, believing they have exchanged the most binding pledges of love. And they can never break them and fall into enmity. And at last, to be sure, but their wings have begun to grow so that the madness of love brings them no small reward. For it's a law that those who have once begun their upward progress, ha, they shall never again pass into darkness and the journey under the earth, but shall live a happy life in the light as they journey together. And because of their love shall be alike in their plumage when they receive their wings. Wow, that's cool. Right, 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 right. So what's the difference between the two? <laughs> here? Hey, Pierre? Go. Am I missing something here? Because the when we went into the, those that lived a life less noble, and the description there, they're describing two sets of horses and two charioteers, are they not? Well, each one has an unruly horse, yeah, so two unruly, unruly horses, horses to, yeah. which is quite different from above, where we don't yeah. see the the right. having yeah. horses and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Let me throw a couple of. Them. No, I won't. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What do you see? What are we looking for? We're looking I don't know. I just wonder what you see about the stuff. You know, it's a paperback. But what were you? What are you looking for? The contrast between the, the God of Zeus and Ares, whether or not those who follow those two can be said to differ, and how do they differ, and what's the advantage of one, and what should be ignored in the other, right? Um, yeah, obvious difference is the wings. There's a difference in wings. Is there any difference? You know, I was wondering whether there's any difference between the Symposium and the Phaedrus, but I keep forgetting to ask that. Oh, I'm not sure. might ask. Well, yeah, go ahead. You're starting grade. The personal relationship is a lot more detailed in the Phaedrus. Yeah, I go for that. Yeah. Watch. That's a difference. That's agreement. I practice it at night with my wife. Right. That's it? Uh, doesn't, doesn't the Intima talk about the idea you know, of engaging with values and working on you know, learning about them so that then they just become bodies? Whereas Keep going. In this, in this case, they're talking about initially, you know, having a chaste relationship, 
And as I remember, a diatema does not advocate that in the beginning because they must have understanding of the body before they can truly you know, be able to begin to control those desires, as I remember the edema. I can, I can, uh... Yeah, okay. Uh, by the way, could this be a model there for, for all people? Mm -hmm. Louder? Yes. Okay. I don't think so, by the way. I wish I'd tell you. You're not offering coffee or anything? Huh. Yeah, okay, this is a model for all people, isn't it? Yeah, right? What do you mean this is the model? There's at least two, right? What, what? Not 12. This is eight. I said, What's the model? said this is the model several times, too. P please. I, I didn't hear you. I thought you said, I thought you said this is the model for all people. Yeah, uh, and, is it? And I was saying, yeah, is it? Well, yeah. I said, there are at least two, aren't there? And in fact, there are 12 different... Yes, ones. yes, yes, so yes. So, when you even say... Even though there may be the characters that could be lined up into these 12 ways and com be combined accordingly, is it a model for all people or not? Oh, no. I see. Yeah. In what kind of relationship? For when he, one of the 12 gods. Okay, that's it. Okay. Okay. Well... What kind of relationship? A love relationship? Yeah, okay. Any relationship. This, yeah, okay. The, the Phaedrus is talking about the spiritual life of the soul, not the physical life. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Okay. We goofed. Fill us in. Why should I tell you? Oh, because I'm here. <laughs> huh? I'm here. <laughs> That's good. That's a good answer. <laughs> and if you could answer that symposium question, too, that would be Oh, I've asked the wrong, you know, I always ask the wrong question. Oh, I, I, I goofed up. Say, can you find that passage for me where he talks about, uh, uh, now you may not be familiar, but boy and girl can be expressed with he and she. <laughs> We got that part. You got. You already know that. Yeah. Oh, so there will not be any confusion, and would you not agree through this whole thing there should be equal, at least a, a, a split. Many times he's using one and then the other, right? When he's talking about the lover and the beloved, right? <laughs> no. It doesn't happen in this dialogue. Uh, why not? What well, is it? Because he's talking to Phaedrus, and Phaedrus is enamored with Lysis. Well, why? <laughs> whoever men. he's talking to, so what? I mean, let me do that again. Ah, so what? I like the better second one. <laughs> the only, he only uses he. The, everything in this is all... Okay, what I'm trying to do is to pull you away from the particular, which is correct. So hold on to your insight and push it in terms of what we have here. And you got the whole thing. You're making it particular in respect to Phaedrus and Lysias. So you're saying... Or he's seeing that it's only homosexual relationships we're talking I don't, about. What are they? Homosexual. Oh. Male, what would male. that be? Male, male. Or female, or, female. Like oh, that. oh. Huh. Well, which is it in the book? Male, male. What? Male, male. He, he? He, he. he, he. No. That's why they call it the humorous dialogue. Oh, then what kind of a work is this? Now, don't let this out, please. <laughs> right? Because after all, there's a lot of up, you know, all over it, all good, yep. And all I'll be, so what is it? What kind of work is it? How far should a homosexual relationship go, according to the Phaedrus, if I'm, I'm being persuaded by your rhetoric, not me, I don't hold this myself, but I'm just curious about the book. It's What's he mean. saying? He's saying no. It, it's at the, now he's saying yes under what conditions? The closest is honor. If it's Zeus-like. But not even under Zeus-like. Not even in Zeus-like. Okay. Oh, okay, maybe I'm All right. No, no, please finish it. Don't, don't let me interrupt you. Well, this would be a model for all people. Could be a model for all people, but 
and develop that into all relationships and bring in the ideal with a particular relationship to raise each other to follow the goodness of the character, habits, love, honor, and undertaking of each other's okay. well-being. I'll you try say that. That's good. I'll try that. He's putting forth a general theory, but then he is in particular taking on the issue of homosexuality in respect to, as he's talking about, the difference between Aries and the Zeus followers in that two paragraphs. Is that right? Is that what you see? Mm -hmm. I would see that. I just want to know because I'm, I teach at Golden Vest, which is a haberdashery college in Huntington Beach, <laughs> and I want to look good, so I need a couple of good answers. <laughs> Yeah, Brad's lectures there on the vests. It's a clothing factory. He even has dreams about the clothing. Don't you? Yeah. See? Well, the Zeus, the Zeus relationship doesn't... Uh, if it's Zeus-like, then it has modesty and reason that rule it, and it doesn't engage in the... Um, what the the beloved would like, but reason and modesty constrain itself from what would be considered uh, homosexual in action. Yeah. Everything you said is not connected with the idea, with your conclusion, which was referenced to homosexuality, by the way. What you're saying is there, okay, but the way you connect it, I don't see the connection. So make it clear, and I'm I'm called to the agreeable olive tree. Okay. Okay. Isn't Lysias known for being honorable, or he's well known? Isn't he in the dialogue? He's a well known uh, rhetorician, right? I don't know. Is is that so? Is that the case? Uh, please, please do it again. I'm not sure I get your point. I, I'm just wondering the role of honor being played between Phaedrus and Lysias. Well, what kind of honor would you say that? Well, if Phaedrus is right an honor lover, and that's why he wants to be with Lysias, or if it's vice versa, then you could tie in uh, right the, the the model of Aries. You see, there's. Uh you push what you're thinking, right? You're saying, hey, look here, there's an idea. You could use the idea of honor and respect to what Phaedrus is doing in this dialogue, and especially in his relationship to Lysias as represented by the speech. Right, right, right. Okay, how would you see that? So that means we have to pull together some idea of honor from the dialogue or somewhere in Plato and see whether that can be applied. Yeah. Like certainly it's honorable, is it not, uh, for someone to urge in a love relationship to always pick the person who is the non-lover over the lover? No. Oh, what? No. Oh. Oh. Good. And that's what Lysias is saying. But, but Phaedrus, <laughs> Phaedrus honors Lysias for so doing, right? Because he's a genius. He's been spending all this time with his work, uh -huh. memorizing it. Okay, look, look her. What if we now go back and look at it right through the whole speech and pick up the parts we left out because it has a lot to say and it's worthwhile before he goes into this comparison between Zeus and Ares? All right, next time. Fair? Mm -hmm. Since I don't hear any serious questions, I can go on and have my sip of coffee, right? I have a question. Uh-oh. All right. This is a different question. Um, he talks about conquered in one of the three truly Olympic contests. What are the other two? I don't know. I don't either. <laughs> but I thought I'd ask. Yeah, you. good, good. I, I, that's an easy one for me to answer. Good. <laughs> but it... Can we find it in the text? Uh, you might, if you look. <laughs> yeah. So, is the issue that's on the table whether this... Do it again, please. Is the issue on the table 
whether this description of love applies only to male homosexuals or no. applies it's whether to the description of the follower of Zeus compared to the lover in Aries, whether that constitutes a he-he relationship, not the whole thing. The point is raised whether or not the other description is universal and is not reduced to just one kind of love. The goal, remember the goal was this one. Understanding. Did we achieve our goal? Does it look like, therefore, a human being is, must understand? That, would he then be understanding love and respect to Greek mythology and the way in which it may work as an ideal, etc., the way we were talking? Mm -hmm. Ah. Except for the many experiences. See, now we've got to go back. As you go back into this section, does that solve the puzzle? Does that allow it to be more intelligible than it was last week? That's our goal. Pierre, what about the many experiences of the senses part? Pardon? What about the many experiences of the senses part? That's what he's supposed to be. But aren't there many experiences in the senses? Well, they all seem to be sexual, though. No, not all. A lot of them is the impact of looking at someone's eyes and, the, and what happened. Uh, Absolutely. Go, go, go. As Barbara said, but, she had a whole bunch of their many references to but, perceptions. Right. Not only visual perception, like sight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. So. Okay, then we come back and play? Yeah. All right. No, no, we're going to ask the difference between the knowledge of the Zeus love. Yes. Thing? Through memory, uh, what a quote. With, with those those things, the communion with, with which, which causes, causes God, God to be God defined. To be divine. Like so the great quotes. And so he's calling this part here, this communion here, memory, between the philosopher and these things, and this communion between God and these same things. Is that which causes God to be divine? Yeah. Sort of Can you explain that? That's two forty nine B. Yeah, two forty nine C to B. Yeah, sorry, C. C. Um, at the bottom. I, I, uh, um, page four eighty one at the bottom. Yeah, no, that's not really good. Um, He doesn't have a what I like is this quote. It's one of my favorite quotes. Um, What's the question up here? At uh, 473, 246E. <clears throat> The natural function of the wing is to soar upwards and carry that which is heavy up to the place where dwells the race of the gods. More than any other thing that pertains to the body, it, it partakes of the nature of the divine. But the divine is beauty, wisdom, goodness, and all such qualities. By these, then, the wings of the soul are nurtured and grow. Mm. Okay, where is that? In, in 473. Right. So what do you want to know? Bottom of the page. All right, that explains that. I wanted to know what the things were, and that, that kind of explains it. Things. Because I want to know what things are that God is in communion with, which causes God to be divine, and, and also how that's like... Uh, how the philosopher through memory is in communion with those things. Well, their memory is of that experience. See, the experience is not complete. Um, so, I really then was moving in a direction that was far different than you wanted an answer to. You just wanted to answer about other things. Here I went off on a toot. Oh, but we don't mind. 
Yeah, then that's fine. That might have been that's the right too. Yeah. Uh, what uh, could you please give me the, uh, the uh, reference to that? My the um, bottom of 481, Pierre. Pardon me. The bottom of 481. Four. Uh, page 481. No wonder I'm on the wrong page. <laughs> Oh, yeah. What are the things? Is that right? Yeah, and why would those, why would those things cause God to be, the communion That's with which, strange. why does God need to be in communion with, with things in order to be divine? And, uh, and how is that at all like, um, like remembering those, those real, those truths above the heavens? Um, it's not that God's in communion with those things. Well, um, <clears throat> well, that's what it. Um, that's that well, it the communion which causes God to be divine. Right, but it's not God that's in the communion. That's how see, we're, we're talking about an. See, we're talking about an experience, aren't we? Yes or no? Yes. He describes it, doesn't he? Former experience. He even calls it a, a, a luminous experience. It's a, a most brilliant light of being, right? It's an experience, a mystical experience. Luminosity. <clears throat> right? Hey, that has a beginning, has a middle, has an end. Uh, it's incomplete. How so? Well, it's incomplete. Because the, now, after this... Mm -hmm. They go down. Philosopher walks away with a cup of coffee, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> now, would you not agree? He might, in fact, recall that? Mm -hmm. Might he not? The dude sure as hell wouldn't want to forget it. Would he? Yeah. Might have to dream about it later. Though people have forgotten them. In reality, people forget profound experiences all the time. Nothing unusual. Simply walk away. What does this dude do? He's cultivating the memory of it. Isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, or, good heavens. Uh, <clears throat> remember the symposium what happens after you have a vision of the nature of reality I don't remember oh. if it gives birth to <laughs> nurture and bring it up to yeah. virtue yeah. Yeah. please Barbara both you have to, uh, well, to use Barbara's reflection nurture it and bring it up until you Give birth to true excellence. Therefore, it is in principle incomplete. Mm -hmm. And when he is given birth, go ahead, at the end, 106. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, I don't mean to bump uh, through it. Okay. This is the, the, uh, final step in the perfection of beauty in the symposium. I'll read you where he picks that up. Do you not reflect, she said, that there only will it be possible for him when he sees the beautiful with the mind, which alone can see it, to give birth not to likenesses of virtue since he touches no likeness, but to reality since he touches reality. And when, future, and when he has given birth to real excellence and brought it up, what does he have to do? Out of that something he must bring to birth and bring it up, brought it up, nurture it. Right? Then will he not be granted, uh, will it not be granted him to be the friend of God and immortal if any man ever is? So out of that experience in the symposium, there is something that has to be brought to birth a certain kind of excellence 
and it has to be developed, nurtured. So, but also, it says uh, making him a friend to God and immortal. I'm paraphrasing. But those are attributes that are godlike. Yeah, I, excuse me. Uh, I was thinking about something totally different. Uh, what? Wait a minute. Wait a well, you just uh, said. Yeah, okay, just, 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 just a moment. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm sorry, what you just said. I've got the faintest idea. Go ahead. Maybe you'll find out what you thought. Well, would you please go on? Um, <clears throat> what you just read was bringing forth those excellences makes a person a friend to God. Yes. And as immortal as... If any man ever is. Yes. Right. No, no. Those are attributes that are godlike. Yeah. So yeah. then tying that back into the, yeah. what we were talking yeah. about, yeah. Yeah. perhaps that's what is meant by this communion giving With divinity which. to causes the gods to become divine. To become That's right. Divine. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I would... Yeah. Yeah. Because something has to come out of that. And that's the very other thing is which cause the, the gods to be divine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that makes perfect sense, especially the way Thomas Taylor puts it, because yeah. he puts it as by an application to which even a god becomes divine, yeah. which then draws you much back closer to how the gods are sitting there constantly yeah. looking at yeah. it. Yeah. Good. 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 So the gods are contemplating this. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Time and they just Take a break. So this tells us this. We, need to, we need to marry the two horses and bring them together. So we bring, so we eventually hey, have them carry. We'll get horses. someone to bring their two horses next week. <laughs> next week? Yeah. Yeah. Somebody bring some horses next week. I, I don't go anywhere without them. Uh, <laughs> I got uh, 198 under my hood, but they're pretty agreeable. Okay.